welcome back to another episode of What's Working in E-Commerce. I'm excited because today we have Chris Ostergaard from our team at Caravan Digital. He's going to tell us about how to increase the opt-in rate on your email list on your website. Now, Chris, remind us, why is it important to do that? And uh, tell us a little bit about the thought of kind of the welcome series and the fly-in and the pop-up and things like that. Well, I mean, it's it's always important to, to get people on the on your email list because you will always need them to come back to your website, no matter how good it is. They'll have stuff to do, so you really want to make sure you can email them to remind them that you exist. And the higher percentage of people who visit the site who sign up for the email list, the more chance you have to continue the conversation, market to them, and sell, right? So I have here in front of me a client's Clavio account. This is their email marketing tool. And what I can see is you've been working on this, Chris. This is the form submit rate, and this is for the welcome series, right? We launched our email campaigns with them about a year ago. So here you can see basically how the uh, submit rate has gone. Initially, we were just running a basic, you know, sign up, get a 20% coupon. But then we decided that we needed to elaborate a bit more on that. And that's when we decided to do all of the A-B testing to make sure we, we got from 3.59% or wherever it was when we started to over 6% now. Yeah, it, it looks like you've really climbed that. How did you do this? I like to say some kind of magic, but really it's just different things, testing. I think the first A-B test we ran was determine whether or not people would be more engaged with a pop-up if we uh, offered them the option to select their different interests. So basically, some people would see this version, right? And this is the more involved one. This is the one you were kind of testing, like, should they enter their interests? Is that right? So before we just had name and email, and now we're saying, what are you interested in on the website? Is that right? Well, it, we initially started with this one because we wanted to segment as soon as we possibly could. So at least start growing a, a more elaborate email list. It's, it's all very good to have a generic 20,000 contact email list, but the, the more granular you can get, the more specific you can get, the better it is. Off the bat, we went off with this, and I think, um, I don't mean to throw you under the bus here, Egan, or anything, but I mean, you raised the, the, the hypothesis that maybe uh, having these uh, checkboxes would take away from the overall performance of the um, pop-up, which is a fair point, because really what we learn with lead magnets is you want them to be as simple and straightforward as possible. This was the original form here, right? So it was much more simple, and we didn't ask as many questions. We didn't ask your interest. We just said, what's your first name and email? And I was concerned, hey, if we add all these other interests, the submit rate will go down, right? And you said, let's test it. Yeah, essentially. I think, well, actually, if, if I remember correctly, I think this one with the interests was the first one. And then once we had, once Clavio launched the A-B testing feature on their on their sign up forms, we that was the first one we did to just kind of sweep it under the rug. It was a long test, it took almost I said, two and a half months to, to kind of run its course. It was still pretty, pretty similar. And, and even if it were the other way around, the value of getting those segments probably outweighs the 0.2% or something difference in submission rate. So no matter how close they are, the value of being able to segment the way we do now um, really outweighed. I see. So know. even if this more involved form with interest, even if that had a lower submit rate, it could still be worth it because we're getting additional segmentation so we can send specialized marketing to those people. Is that right? And let me just highlight this. So what, what you're saying is it was a close race. I can see down in the lower right, the form submit for the more detailed one with interest looks like that was over 3%, 3.04%. The more bare bones name and email actually got 2.6%. So this is a yeah. A-B testing is a fun way to prove, prove your boss wrong. Is that right? Oh, I, I never slept so well after. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. It feels good, right? But it, I mean, it's not so much being right or wrong. And I think for any any other client, it could have been the absolute opposite, and you could have gotten a four percent increase in submission rate with with fewer fewer options on the on the on the sign up form. But the interesting thing here is is really indicates to sort of how engaged this particular customer base is, and how maybe appreciative they are of being asked about what they may want to receive and be uh, and be marketed to. That makes sense. You're doing marketing science here. We're, we have a hypothesis, let's test it, let's find out what the data show. Tell me about this piece right here. What is the win probability and the statistical significance? Well, we wanna make sure that what we're doing actually is a better option and we wanna make sure that we're implementing the better strategies every time. And so if we were to just sort of, if it were kind of insignificant, and that's probably why it took so long for it to determine a winner, for it to be st statistically significant. We wanna make sure that what we're implementing later on really actually reflects the more efficient strategy. 
It's basically, if you do a test and you only have, let's say, 100 views or 1,000 views here, it may just be random chance. It doesn't necessarily mean that in the future it's more likely to have a higher submit rate versus when you have enough people testing. You can see we had 18,000 tests on this one, 20,000 on this one. That's enough to prove that this is 99% probable win. You should probably switch to the winner. Is that right? Definitely. But what I also like to see here is that over the two and a half months that we were running this, we got over a thousand submits, so it's a win-win. And um, what I'd be interested in actually is one of my next tests is probably run this test again and then see what the conversions are on the website. Like, What do the purchases look like once people have signed in and shown uh, their interest? I see, and that's something our client would be interested in. If we go through this flow section over here and do the analysis and see which one made more sales because that's what matters, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Let's look at another one. So this is the one with the never miss out on any on news or promotions. So this is the header, that's why we get the attention of the of the customer. And just okay. the, the regular form. And then we tested the, the coupon actually in the header. So coupon stands out and I think this was perhaps one of the shortest lived A B tests in the history of A B tests. I think it was like eight days long. We got alright, it was a ninety nine point nine nine win probability, but Clavio doesn't deem it as statistically significant. Why might that be? I reckon it's probably because the sample sizes were too small and it probably wasn't run long enough. I see. So in this case, how many people saw this form? We only had a thousand on the high end on the B version of the test versus in the last one we saw it was well over 10,000 getting on 20,000 views, right? So sign up to our newsletter. Let us know what kind of product you're most interested in and get 20% off your next purchase. Now, Chris, credit where it's due. Did I say move this into the header? Yes, you did. So you won, you win this one again. <laughs> what we found, at least for this client, was if you're offering a discount on that first purchase, let them know right in the header, right? So this is something other people can test if they're watching, but what's in it for them? Let's put that right at the top, right? Exactly. And, it, and it's, it's more catchy anyway. So it definitely makes them, they probably don't even need to read that small paragraph. They just go, oh, I'm going to get 20% off, put my name in, check any random box I need to. Or you have those that are genuinely engaged and will actually select stuff that they want. Let's look at one more, Chris. You're testing uh, the amount on the original discount. Is that right? Is that this current test? And what? We're, oh yeah, this was. So we're testing 20% discount versus 30%, right? Yeah. So it's 20% off already discounted products on the website versus 30% off uh, full price. The challenge here was to not only A/B test the opt-in rates, which when we drew up the hypothesis behind this was we anticipated that the 30% would perform better. So it wasn't necessarily this part of the A-B test that we wanted, that we were really interested in. It was sort of the back inside, once they're in the flow, what's their purchasing behavior like? As you and the client discuss this, that distinction of 30% off the full purchase price versus 20% off your next purchase, is the owner giving away additional margin here or it's kind of a technicality, a different way of talking about the same promotion? There is a, a slight difference in the margin, so the 30% off is still a bigger, better discount, but it's not 10% extra like it, it sort of seems to be. So it's only, I think, about a, an extra 4% or 3% discount compared to the 20%. So it's not massive, but it's still it still gets people to, to sign up. So not only here did we have a much higher submit rate, so, not, so we have more people getting that coupon anyway. So that probably already makes up for the difference in margin. And then what we found that was really interesting is not only did we have a higher conversion rate, but we actually had a higher average uh, placed order. So the increased average order value then. One thing I like here is before you run the test, you state your hypothesis, you state how we're going to know whether we win or not. And one thing you explained here was ultimately the client wants more sales, more margin. And so there's going to be some analysis on the back end of this of not only is the opt-in rate higher, which it is 99.9% .9 statistically significant, people like that 30% off better, right? Then you're going to go into the flows and you're going to do the analysis and determine which one got us more sales, which one got us more profits. Is that right? Exactly. Because well, I mean, if we run a, a, an A-B test where we're saying, oh, you get 20% off or you get 80% off, 80% will win without a question, but is it actually worth running? And so was intrigued because he has a lot of a lot of the products on his website are already discounted as, you know, as they are constantly. The idea was like, what if we offer something at full price 
and you know, for a bigger discount, but it's not as big as people s think it is. And so we were kind of skeptical to begin with because it's sort of like, if someone gets to checkout, puts in the 30%, it's like, oh, it's not as good as I thought it would be because the price is already displayed, already discounted. So then when you add the 30%, it just increases the initial price and then takes off the 30%. One of the, one of the fears we had was that people would kind of abandon checkout because they were disappointed with the, uh, with the result. But ultimately it proved to be um, a, a very valuable A-B test. And not only did we get higher opt-ins, but we got you know be better conversions and better sales from it. So it was a, it was a really interesting one. I'm just gonna pull up one more time. Am I looking at the right thing? This is the sign up form. This is the fly out opt-in rate. You can see up and to the right, this is how you get way more of your website visitors to opt into your email list. Is that right? Every little test we've done, whether it be confirm a hypothesis or even confirm what we were already doing, it's always beneficial to run an A-B test. That's phenomenal. Chris, any advice to the viewers of, if they've got an e-commerce store, they've got a website where they want more people opting in, what sort of things should they test and why should they A-B test? Well, you want to A-B test to really get a sense of like what your customers respond to. Like I said before, every customer has a, or every business has a different you know customer persona. And so we've run tests before where we were testing a fly out versus a pop-up. In many cases, the, the pop-up performed better. In this case, for this client, the fly out worked better. So that's one of the, I'd say one of the first First test you want to run and then just test the copy the layout the colors for one client I just changed the colors to something a bit more visually pleasing and in line with the, the rest of the website and that also increased the um, submit rate so your 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 imagination is the only limit you have to maybe test you can test something as trivial as color or you can test something as technical as a, as a coupon for 20% off discounted price versus 30% off full price you can maybe test subject lines you can maybe test everything so anything that you have a question on or anything that you are debating in relation to your to your business and your customers that can probably be a b tested love it thanks so much for joining us again on what's working in e-commerce chris no worries thanks a lot again